Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fabulous Friday Ramblings. I'm your host, David, aka the Bardic One, and we are going to do a happy little march straight through November. But before we get too into the Turkey Day funny games, we're going to take a quick romp through a favorite movie of mine. That's right, you can't have Thanksgiving dinner holidays until you do the work. And that means we're going to break down and discuss a fan favorite and a cult favorite. That is the Italian job. Woo! Italian job! So for those of you who are not familiar with this movie, The Italian Job is a heist film. This is a particular sub-genre of the crime film, which means your main protagonists are in fact criminals and the fun and games of your movie is in seeing if they can get away with their crime, which is usually for the sake of wanting to cheer for them, portrayed as a relatively harmless crime. And the criminals themselves are shown as having hearts of gold, similar to the Robin Hood dynamic. Now, The Italian Job is a 2003 American film and is inspired by a 1969 British film of the same title. Now, the reason I say inspired by and not a remake of is that while the main character's name is reused and the basic idea of a group of people pulling off a gold heist is reused, there is so much difference between the two films that even the director himself says that this is more of an homage to the original British film than an attempt to make a true remake. Which is probably one of the main reasons why I enjoy the film. Is the film was not hampered down by an attempt to reinvent the wheel like a lot of remakes do. But more importantly because it was, and this is one of the big things that tends to make me rant and ramble about remakes. Because it was... A 2003 American film compared to a 1969 British film, you are looking at a 34-year difference and a jump between countries. As such, it is a little more understandable why somebody would try to redo what has already been done. Simply put, enough time has passed that there is an entire generation of people growing up and because you are going from one country to another you are much less likely to have the original movie be common knowledge truth is i did not know italian job was based off a previous film until i had already seen it a few times over and several years had passed now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with the original film the original 1969 italian job is a perfectly wonderful film in its own right and has inspired many filmmakers. But we are speaking on the 2003 film because the 2003 film is the one I am much more familiar with, having owned it on DVD as we demonstrated with Woohoo! Visual prop. So let's break down our cast and then we'll get through our minimal spoilers plot the cast features Mark Wahlberg Charlize Theron Edward Norton who is a personal favorite of mine a early short appearance by Donald Sutherland Jason Statham in one of his earliest roles at least here in America as Handsome Rob, which itself became a bit of a running joke. He's Handsome Rob. Why is he Handsome Rob? Because he's Handsome Rob. Uh, one of those fun nicknames. You also have Seth Green, 
Moe's Def as one of my favorite characters, Left Ear, the team's demolition and explosive expert, as well as Frankie G as the mechanic wrench, Boris Lee Krutunog as Yevhen, a jewelry store owner with ties to the Ukrainian mob, which becomes a major plot point later in the film. Now, Edward Norton as Steve Frizzelli is your antagonist of the movie. As I said, we're going to go through a quick, uh, minimal spoiler idea. A crew led by Donald Sutherland's character of John Bridger, who is the safe cracker du jour of the team, pulls off a heist in Italy stealing gold bars. And I mean a lot of gold bars. $35 million worth. Yes, I know the official term is gold bullion, but I'm trying to get images in the mind of people, and not everybody may know what bullion is. We are talking nice gold bars. Now, the important thing to remember, because this is a plot point that will come up in the movie, is that gold bullion, when it is transported left and right, forged into bars and used for various things, tends to have a maker's mark on it to help clue people in as to the gold's origins, which is kind of an important thing. Kind of like the jewelry industry where really high-end jewelry makers will leave little calling cards so you know no matter what you may be told, who actually made this stuff. Hence the term Maker's Mark. Now, the rest of the team include Charlie Croker. Crocker? Probably Crocker. Lyle, the computer expert who likes to use the term Napster, as he claimed that he was the roommate of the founder of Napster and actually came up with the idea himself before his roommate stole the programming code and made his own little infamy with it. The wheel man, the aforementioned handsome Rob. And along with explosive expert Left Ear, who we previously mentioned, and Steve. The heist is successful, but as they drive towards Austria with the bullion, they are stopped by other robbers who turn and turn on them and take the bullion. However, the real trick is that these second set team of bad criminal people were actually working for Steve, who in the process of betraying his team and taking all the gold for himself, kills team leader and safe cracker John Bridger before Handsome Rob drives the van over a, bridge or in the, over a bridge into the waters below to protect the others using air tanks from the heist to stay alive and make their escape from Steve, who makes off with the gold. So, bad guy won, apparently. Well, here's the thing. Things happen, and a year later, in the United States, Charlie finally tracks down Steve, who has created a new identity for himself, and is laundering the gold one bar at a time through the Ukra Ukrainian jeweler Yevhen to finance a lavish lifestyle in Los Angeles, which includes... Not just using the stealing funds, but stealing ideas from some of his buddies on, hey, the most fun ways to spend your money, including Napster's killer sound system idea. This leads to Charlie deciding that to reunite the gang and steal the gold from Steve who stole it from them, bringing closure to Mentor John's death 
and serving a lesson to Steve that those who betray their friends do not get to have a happy ending. Unfortunately, because they now need a safe crack for the team with John dead, they decide to recruit John's daughter, Stella, who herself is a skilled safe cracker who generally works on a more legit level. For instance, early in the movie, we see her basically testing safes made by companies to see how hard it actually is to break into them. Because let's be honest, safe cracker can break into your safe within a matter of seconds. That's not a product you're going to make a lot of money on on the market. You need something that's going to take them a long enough time that the cops can get there and stop them. So sometimes you hire safe crackers to do legitimate work. It's all a good thing. So the team stakes out Steve's mansion. Stella, being a unknown person to Steve, infiltrates it, pretending to be a cable technician, so that she can get inside views of the mansion. Through this, the team is able to come up with a plan to get the gold out of the mansion and do what they need to do. Unfortunately, Steve being smart enough to have figured out how to steal the gold to begin with very quickly puts together what is going on and decides to move the entirety of the gold fortune before the team can steal it from his house. This creates a change of plans and the team must now try to figure out how to steal the gold while it is being transported out of LA. This changes everything up and we get into a lot of fun involving traffic and a few extra people being brought onto the team including the aforementioned mechanic who outfits a set of Mini Coopers to be as butt kicking racing as possible which pleases Handsome Rob. Now, as I said, I'm going to skip a lot of the details because we do like to give spoiler-free reviews as much as we can. I will say that there is a romantic subplot between Charlie and Stella. I will say that there is a lot of good humor present in the film, mostly through the witty back-and-forth banter between the various members of the criminal team as they plan their heist, plan what to do with the gold, again, and just generally do what friends do, which is cut up on each other to relieve tension. So does the good guys win the day? Well, you're going to have to watch me to find out. All I will say is, stealing the gold from the team to begin with in Italy is not the only thing Steve does. That tends to cause some karmic Im imbalance in his life. And when it's all said and done, Steve does not have a happy ending due to the fact that he repeatedly messes people up for no reason but his own selfish good feelings. Still, the key of all this is... Why is this a movie you should watch if you've never seen it before? Why is it a movie you should rewatch if you've seen it before? Well, it comes down to this. Whoop, whoop. Time to get serious mode here. This movie features a great cast of people who, whether were already established at the time, such as Donald Sutherland and Mark Wahlberg, or would go on to continue establishing themselves and building a stellar reputation such as Jathan Statham and Seth Green or people that are just plain charismatic and good at being a little light-hearted in their action crime motif such as most Def's turn as left ear you get a fun-filled trip that includes flat flashbacks to people's personal lives Funny games, 
a little romantic tension, and most importantly, some great car chase scenes, a few explosions, and just plain adrenaline pumping fun. Because that is what we all want from our action style movies, which is what heist films really are. They are a subgenre of the crime movie, which itself is a bit of a subgenre of action adventure flicks. And this is what makes it all good. Nobody really phones it in in this movie. Everybody does their best to make their characters spark, and every character gets enough screen time to build up their own personal fan base. This is one of the biggest problems that there tends to be with ensemble cast movies is that a lot of characters will be glorified cameos. The Italian job is smart enough to make sure that all members of the team have their chance to discuss their own motivations, their own dreams and desires, their own backstory, and as such are people we all want to care about. So when it's all said and done, what else do you want in a movie? That's what I'm asking you. I've laid it all out. You get car chases. You get explosives. You get fun and games. You get romance. You get Edward Norton being a jerk. And as I said before, Edward Norton is a personal favorite of mine. And the thing is, He's one of those guys that, for whatever reasons, I don't know, I don't know him personally, tends to play the morally sketchy people well. His turn as a racist who eventually rehabilitates in American History X, as well as the stressed out and paranoid to the point of manically obsessed with curing himself, Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk, one of the earliest movies in the MCU saga, are great examples of what he does. In The Italian Job, you get more of that. Steve is an intelligent, in not just book, but street smart sense, but is also anxious, a little paranoid, and definitely not social. This is a guy who has known since the day he took that gold because he didn't confirm for himself 100% that the rest of the team was dead that there was always a chance they were going to come for that gold. So he has been spending the entire year in between the, the original theft of the theft and the modern day attempts to steal the theft of the theft, woo, layers, wondering when this day would come because he knew in the back of his mind if Charlie was alive, Charlie was going to come for him. And this bleeds through Steve's character. He is definitely an interesting antagonist, but we can say the same thing for the flip side of the coin there in Mark Wahlberg's Charlie. Charlie's a man that does break the law, but he does it while maintaining loyalty to his friends and respect for those who taught him the rules of the game. Charlie's coming after Steve not just for the money, but because of what the money represents. Steve's betrayal of the trust that the team had put in him, along with the, frankly put, unnecessary murder of Elder Statesman John. This gives Charlie a very much hero's journey seeking not pure revenge but justice for wrongs done against him and those he cares about. So, when it comes down to a duel between those values and those psychological profiles, well, you know it's not going to be neat, it's not going to be easy, and as such, it's going to be a great thrill ride to watch. So, 
As I said, there's really not much else I can say about the film without ruining a lot of specific scenes, and I don't want to do that. Because like all my movie reviews, this is about enticing you to watch this movie. Even if you've seen it before, if it's been more than a year, sure do another viewing. In fact, I haven't seen it for a little while, but let me crack this open and uh, give it another watch through. Probably not tonight, because I'm recording this a little late in the evening, but definitely in the next few days. We will enjoy, we hope you enjoy, more importantly, if you've seen the movie and you actually hate it, tell me in the comments. If you've seen the movie, you agree it's awesome, you own it as well and want to bond with me over that, tell me in the comments. I'm not afraid to hear either side of the issue. Just keep it respectful. Keep it constructive. No matter what, remember, this channel and these videos are all about giving you a little bit of a break from the stress and grind of everyday life. That's why we talk about entertainment. Entertainment's supposed to make us feel good, and this movie, in my humble opinion, will most definitely, most def definitely, <laughs> punny punny, have you clapping and cheering for Charlie and his crew and wishing harm upon Steve as he just gets worse and worse in his sinful, selfish ways. And when it's over, you are going to feel like you have hit an emotional high right alongside that crew of criminals that you can't help but love. So join us in seven days. We're going to do another ramblings. And eventually, we'll have a day after Thanksgiving chat. Now, will it be turkey related? Will it not be turkey related? We don't know. You're going to have to watch. Just like, I'm not going to tell you what next week's episode is. You're going to have to watch too. And the best way to watch? Subscribe. To our channel, little button right down there. It's Roulette Productions. We got shows running throughout the week, so don't feel like you have to wait to visit this channel until Fridays or Saturdays, whenever you choose to watch these videos. I'm not worried, but Friday is when the Friday Ramblings drop. That's why we call them the Friday Ramblings. But they're not the only days we drop new content. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay entertained. Bye-bye.